All right, so we're going to get started shortly. Um, my name is Michael Rambridge, and I am an applications engineer at Unitronics. A quick reminder that we are going to take all questions. You can put them in the box, and we'll try to get to them at the end. Um, if there are any questions that are specific to an application that you have, please email those to support at unitronics.com. Um, for, for more project specific kind of questions. Hello, hello everyone and welcome to our one integrated solution webinar. Today we'll be covering all of Unitronics integrated automation solutions and how they can help you speed up your development time. At a glance, Unitronics was established in 1989. We serve any industry where automation can apply and we have over a million installations worldwide that use Unitronics controllers or automation systems. We have distributors all across the US and the world. And we offer one unified programming environment that serves Unistream. And that also covers all of your IO, your vision systems, your web server, anything that's a Unitronics product and is connected to a Unistream is managed through that one programming environment. Um, there is no additional cost for support or for the programming software. And we offer, in terms of physical hardware, we have a standalone PLC, we have built in PLCs, um, HMIs, VFDs, IO, servos, and we now offer a UniCloud service. And the Unistream in particular is expandable to over 2,000 IO uh, points. We've been consistently delivering quality products for over 30 years now and look forward to many more. And again, this one integrated programming environment can help save you a significant amount of time and hassle when you're getting a system up and running. All of the systems are going to be plug and play with a Unitronics controller that servos VFDs and IO. They all have built in um, ladder that we've already made for you in Unilogic. Using all of our systems can help avoid any sort of complexity in worrying about whether one sensor or one system will talk to another, whether you have the right kind of communication ports for VFDs, for servos, the Unistream, can help save time there. It can, it can help you more easily troubleshoot. No matter what the problem is, you contact the same support for all Unitronics products and we'll be able to help you with any problem that comes up with any part of those systems. So it helps save time ordering, single point of contact, and help save some hassle in the delivery progress just because you're only dealing with one vendor and one, one company instead of having to go through the same process with four, five, six different companies to get all the parts for a system that you need. So again, there's time savings all across the board from ordering um, to programming, support, you don't have to call and wait for three different companies if one person says it's the other, says it's the other. You come to us, and if you have a problem with a servo talking to a Unistream, we'll help you out. Going up to the cloud, to web server, we can help troubleshoot every part of that project with Unitronics equipment. So we started with the Unistream line 
offering the all-in-one and the modular controllers with local I.O. and Modbus TCP-based remote I.O. Then we recently introduced the VFDs to control AC single and three-phase motors at a varied range of horsepowers. And then even more recently, we've introduced the servo drives and motors. Those are available in both Unican and EtherCAT. All, all of those servos do only function with Unitronix controllers. Um, and then the newest offering that we provide is UniCloud. UniCloud is a cloud-based system. We'll talk about more later in the presentation, but it helps you organize all of your data in one spot you can have different logins for users, for managers, for machine builders, just so that you can easily monitor all of your installations. So to start, we'll go over the PLC built-in. So this is a Unistream built-in. It's a PLC and HMI on a single piece of hardware. So they come in a 5-inch and a 7-inch, and we also do offer a 10.1-inch screen now as well. They come in a standard or a pro version. The pro version is going to offer a little more RAM, a little faster processing, and some more advanced communication features like SQL. Um, SQL is the main benefit to to the five inch i think sql and mqtt are the main ones and we also have a standalone plc now so the plc is programmed in unilogic just like you would with any built-in or modular unit the plc alone does still have an hmi that is hosted through a vnc server on the plc so that if you were to connect to this unit through VNC, you would see an HMI, just like you would see with any of the other Unistream versions. It just gives you the freedom to mount a, a screen or multiple screens wherever you want on the machine without having them to be super close to any sort of IO or the PLC itself. They can just be connected via a single ethernet cable running from the PLC to the HMI. So they come in three series. Your most basic one has the least sort of communication. It's not expandable. Um, and that's pretty much, it's just a basic, basic PLC. It does logic. It's great for simple applications, products that don't require a lot of I.O., and it's great for OEMs with a lower cost associated with those modules if you don't need any sort of expansion. It also does feature only Ethernet-based programming. When you go up to the standard, you now gain access to USB programming. You can expand the I.O., and you can add additional communication modules to the PLC, and you gain access to non ethernet based communication protocols as well as some more advanced communication protocols when you go to the pro the b10 version you gain that additional ram for some for some faster processing and is better for larger more integrated solutions with more just more stuff going on it again gives you access to sql and web server are the two main features and then we have the Unistream modular. So this is a screen with a, with a CPU that attaches to the back. You can have a select number of IO expansion modules mounted to the back of the screen. There is no built-in IO. And this does come only in the B10 version. Um, this will kind of feature everything that we've talked about before just with all the bells and whistles. Then we'll get to the VFD. So our VFDs 
do have built-in features and they can operate for a rather wide range of temperatures. They all communicate through Modbus RTU, so that is for RS-485 Modbus. They can connect to any device with RS-485. However, with the Unistream and more limited in Visologic, there is built-in programming that you can take advantage of to more easily and seamlessly integrate this into your project. So they do offer uh, vector and torque control, built-in braking units, safe torque off features, and they do come in 240 volt single phase, three phase, and then 460 volt three phase for the larger motors. Our servo drives have an automatic communication set of feature. You just put them into Unilogic and you connect them and they will connect right up. They have embedded diagnostic tools. We also do have a list of pre-made servo HMIs you have access to. And they come in a wide range of power options, 50 watts to 5,000 watts. These are available in single phase 2 to 230 volt, three phase 200 to 230 volt, and then three phase 380 to 440 volt. They do come with an optional holding brake, a built in encoder, this is a 23 bit absolute encoder or a 20 bit inter incremental encoder, and they are only available in CAN Open and EtherCAT. The EtherCAT currently only works with the Unistream PLC only, as that is currently the only module that offers an EtherCAT communication module. And here we have a quick little video. Unitronics Servo Made Simple, motion control has never been easier. Using advanced software, Unitronics' new servo solution simplifies the operations involved in motion control, rationalizing and streamlining the workflow. First, a look at our hardware. Unitronics offers a full line of rugged, high-quality servo drives and motors. all seamlessly supported by our award-winning PLCs, HMIs, IOs, and VFDs. In configuring your hardware, communications, and all aspects of your motion control application, we've done most of the work for you with our superbly efficient and easy-to-use software studio development environment. At the heart of our offering, Unitronic's groundbreaking servo-made simple method eliminates the complex operations associated with motion control, bringing you incredibly useful simplifications. We provide ready-made motion code, enabling various capabilities. Our built-in system integration capabilities let you perform any number of tasks at the tap of a screen, even on your mobile. Unitronics provides you with system-wide control and visibility. You can tune your motion performances using a single parameter and view servo runtime performance via our software studio, powerful built-in high-speed scope. With Unitronics' novel integrated control and automation solution, you can rest assured that the components of your application will all work seamlessly together. You'll enjoy a single software for all PLC, HMI, and motion aspects ready-made, easily modifiable code for instant motion, and a quick learning curve with simplified workflow and guaranteed integration. Effortless integration of all Unitronics products with broad plug-and-play communication capabilities, with an efficient supply for all your motion and control applications. Building on decades of excellence in control and award-winning innovations, Unitronics is proud to present the industry with an end-to-end -end motion control solution. Servo Made Simple, the easy path to motion control.
All right. And to summarize, summarize, you don't need any sort of experience to program these servos. It's just plug and play. You set it up in Unilogic. You set it up with your actuators, your gear boxes, and whatever other mechanical items you have attached to it. And you just tell the system how far you want it to move. It'll do all those conversions for you, and it'll just take care of easily moving that however far you want without having to worry about rotations and that sort of mathematics, as well as handling all the feedback as well. We do also offer the URB Remote I.O. So each one of these has two Ethernet ports and can have over 60 I.O. modules per adapter. The modules are very slim. You can fit a lot of I.O. points into a rather small area. These are also our only systems that support 16-bit analog resolution. They also have the widest operating range in terms of temperatures compared to all of our other products. They do communicate with a Modbus TCP. Um, while it can be configured for use with third-party devices, it integrates, in, it integrates instantly with the Unilogic software suite so that you can just hook right up to these as if they were I.O. modules connected to the back of your controller. So the Unistream also helps bridge, gap, bridge the gap into Ethernet and SCADA control systems with MQTT, OPC UA, SQL compatibility. You can send and receive files like Excel and CSV files through a file transfer protocol. SNMP, it has a built-in web server. So if you were to punch in that Unistream's IP address and you had a pro model, you could bring up that web server. It operates independently of the standard HMI. And you also have the option to have remote access via VNC to any of our controllers. We also now offer the UniCloud. With a Unistream controller, you do not need one of our routers. However, with the Vision, Samba, and Jazz series, you do require the Unitronics router where the UniCloud will be configured through the router instead of through the PLC. Um, you can set up the dashboard to have various users, and you can have those users have access to different components. On the, and then you can have a different account through the machine builder who can monitor whatever else they would like to monitor. This is an overview of kind of the structure of UniCloud. We have your widgets, your secure remote access. So you can use this to VPN into local networks where your controllers are connected, um, provided that your IT sys uh, department allows that. And on the UCR, the B8 router, they do offer a GPS feature that can be connected to the UniCloud as well. So you can monitor the location of your installations if they are mobile. So our Unistream programming software, Unilogic, again, it's an all-in-one software where you can do pretty much everything that you need to do with your controllers. Um, and again, one integrated solution, you can connect up to any of your IT protocols um, from your operating technology. The controller will connect to whatever systems you have, seamlessly integrate with our servos, VFDs, while offering a wide array of communication protocols, including custom function block protocols, which allow you to communicate to any device over serial or ethernet by manually programming that communication method, um, as well as offering USB connectivity if you would like to use a mouse or a keyboard, and then going up to your IT protocols, your MQTT, OPC UA, e they can send emails, um, and the UniCloud as well to monitor multiple installations from one location.
again, a brief overview of just everything that we have. So Unilogic for the Unistream series and Visilogic is for our Vision series and Samba series controllers. The AC drives and motors, the VFDs, those are our two newer motion offerings. Local I.O. expansion and Modbus TCP based remote I.O. expansion, which is compatible with the Unistream and the Vision. Um, and all of our different PLC and HMI lines. So now we're going to go to a brief demonstration in Unilogic of how you might add some of these things to a project. So here I just have a blank project. And first, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our hardware configuration. And you're going to select whatever controller you have. In this case, in this case, I have a 10 inch modular controller. So this will allow me to have access to all the pro features such as SQL and web server. If we wanted to add some local IO, we would go to this uni IO and com. And up here, we'll have all the different local modules that we can add. You can either drag and drop these, or you can double click them and they'll be added to your PLC. One thing to note is if you select any of these communication modules, they get added before your other IO. Communication modules do have to come before the IO modules. For every module you add, you'll see a new struct be created down here in the I.O. tab. Now we can go to the URB remote I.O. And this is where you will configure any of our Ethernet based I.O. This will create a URB adapter struct in the global. But in this menu, We will see down here in properties, we'll configure the IP address of the module we are trying to watch, along with the watchdog settings and the communication timeout. So how long it will wait with no communication before it times out. It's similar if we go over to this hardware configuration again for any of our RS-232 or Unican-based um, remote I.O. I believe it is just Unican or Can Open based. This would be the EXRC1 or the EXA2X. For this, it will just be the EXRC1 offered for Unilogic. Envision your EXA2X would be your local expansion module, but this is going to be a can open based remote IO. And then we can go down to these motion drives. This is where you will add your servos and your VFDs. So here in servos, I've added a UMD B3. And over here in your motor series, you'll select which exact kind of motor you have. So we'll say I have a B1 motor, and then the exact one I have is the UMM, that would be Unitronics Motion Module, 0000, would indicate a 50 watt BA. So the A would indicate an absolute encoder. It would be an N if it was an incremental encoder. And you'll see some here with a B at the end. That would indicate that they have a breaking resistor included on them. So once this is created, you'll see all these features populate here. These are going to be the settings of the motor itself. These are our hardware specs.
And if we go back down here, you'll see servo configuration. And you can select your servo. And now you have a configuration created, which you can click on. And it'll show you all of the different parameters you can change within the servo. These will be downloaded when you connect to the servo and initiate a conf right configuration to the servo. We do have all of the servo parameters here, but we do also have the most commonly used ones already taken out and put into the fast configuration options for you. And if we continue down to the VFDs, it's the same thing as the servos, a little different. You have the UMI-U-B1 is what we're going to add for now. It'll give you the option to import or skip adding diagnostic applications. So we're going to import those. And what this will do is this will add those pre-built functions for the VFD to this project. Importing these libraries is project-based and is not based on your installation of Unilogic. You will have to do this every time you create a new project that has a VFD. You will also be prompted for this for servos if you have not already imported those databases from your servo. All right, and sometimes it just takes a little bit. If it looks like it's frozen, you can go ahead and click on it. If it prompts you to close, hit wait for it to respond, and that will oftentimes refresh it and allow you to keep going and not have to restart, relaunch, and start all over with this integration process. And you'll see this has added a bunch of new structs here. This is going to be a lot of that data that you can view through through uni, through the Unistream. Same thing with the configuration. You select your exact motor here in the configuration. You drag and drop, and it comes up with the same sort of parameter list as you saw in the servo, with the same fast configuration of frequently edited parameters pulled out for easy access. Now if we continue down on the Solution Explorer to Motion, we'll see this option for axes. So these axes is where you will configure your servos. You add a new axis and this is where it will prompt you to import your servo diagnostics and again you just import those and it'll bring up all the monitoring software, all the monitoring pre-made projects for Unilogic. And you'll see down at the bottom, it's just created a large number of structs. All these structs will house all the information related to your servo, and they can be monitored through these structs and creating your own screens or you can use our pre-built screens to monitor all the information associated with your servos. And if you are looking for more in-depth tutorials with our servos or VFDs, we do have webinars on those as well. And you can email us at support at unitronics.com and we can get you recordings of all of those videos and whatever additional information you need for those servos and VFDs. Now, when you create an AXI, you need to link an existing drive to it. Once you've linked that drive, you can give it a description, say drive one, and we can open up that axis. You'll see here it has a whole bunch of different tabs here and over in this toolbox you will see the different actuators and reducers you can add to this system 
So if it has a gearbox, we can just drag and drop that gearbox. Say for one input revolution, we have 10 output resolution revolutions, and it is in units of pound foot inches. It will show you your max output torque, and you can also input the efficiency of your gearbox into this setting, and it will take that into account as well. And you can limit the maximum speed in RPM here. So if you don't want it to exceed 2000 RPM, you can set this to 2000 RPM, and the speed of this gearbox will never exceed 2000 RPM. Regardless of how fast you tell the motor to go, it will stop you and it will not allow those parameters or that, that revolutions to continue increasing. And down here in the units tab, it will show you travel distance. Right now it's in revolutions because we just have a gearbox. But if I add a linear actuator that has an input shaft of one revolution to an output of one, say we want to change that, we want 100 revolutions per unit of travel. We have a max input torque, an efficiency, and a max speed in units. Now you can have this actuator load set to torque or force, and again we're going to set it to pound foot inches. Now if we go back to unit, you're going to see that has a travel distance of 10 millimeters to every 100 revolutions. That's because we have our unit set here to millimeters. Now if we want this to inches, you'll see it updates to a travel distance of 10 inches per 100 revolutions. You can also adjust your maximum stroke here. So if we're using units of inches, and we have, we want 100 revolutions for a travel distance of one unit, and we have an actuator that is 10 times that, we just put in that max stroke, and it will limit it so that you can no longer exceed that, that travel distance. You can also set your motion profile acceleration, deceleration, and how you want it to increase and decrease acceleration as it moves, as well as your different stop options. And you'll also see your homing located down at the bottom. Now if we continue down in this PLC communications, this is where you will handle all of the different um, communication protocols we offer. And right here below that is where you would configure a router. You would enable that router and you would configure the IP address of that router and whatever model it was. And this will allow you to access the SMS feature. And if we continue going down, you'll see here in our ladder, it has added all of these different ladder or code blocks. You'll see here that some of these are programmed in C. Unilogic does support C um, subroutines or ladder functions. It can be programmed in ladder or in C. So some of these are imported in C. They'll be denoted by this C in curly brackets before the name of the function. And you'll see all the different built-in features here. Again, this is covered in a little more depth, depth in our VFD and Servo webinars. In terms of the screens, you can get a general idea of all of the different screens that have been created for us by the development team that you have to easily access all of the diagnostic information 
for the servo and as well for the VFD. You can use these screens or you can edit them to fit your needs um, or you can use them as examples to create your own screens. And then if we go down here, you will see the web server. This is what we talked about being integrated on the pro versions of controllers. You create that add new web page and it will allow you to create a web page that has a little bit more limited element choice than a standard HMI. But this would be an HMI that you can access from anywhere just by VPNing in or remote connecting to your local the factory's network or wherever the PLC is programmed and or installed and then typing in the PLC's panel IP address into the search bar of your web browser. Next, you're going to see is our UniCloud. This is where you would enable UniCloud. By clicking on this, it'll prompt you to first log in. Once you're logged in, it will have you configure your UniCloud settings. That is covered in much more depth in our UniCloud webinars. And if you have any sort of questions on that, again, feel free to email us at support at unitronics.com and we will gladly send you the webinars or other tutorial videos and information related to UniCloud and how to get set up easily. You can log in here and then configure your UniCloud assets. And if you have any further questions, feel free to email us at support at unitronics.com and we will send you any, of the, any and all the tutorial information we have, including prior webinars. And one of the important things, especially on PLC only, is when you go down, you select password management, and you scroll down, and you make sure you enable VNC. This is always disabled by default. If you don't enable this, you will not be able to access VNC from your PLC and you won't really be able to access any of those HMIs. Thank you for tuning in today. If you have any questions, I will answer what I can in the chat box. We ask if you have any specific questions to your applications that you please email those to us at support at unitronics.com and we will get back to you as quickly as we can. All right, so it looks like we don't have any questions right now, but I'll be hanging around for the next 10 to 15 minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the box. If not, that concludes our webinar for today.